Hi, this is Carolyn Weber in Spanish Fork, Utah. Climb over your brick walls, finding orphans and their records. This is part one. Benevolent societies rounded up children when they found them in the train stations, the docks, the streets, or wherever kids were hanging out. These children were typically referred to as gutter snipes. The Children's Aid Society started sending these children on orphan trains in October of 1854. The children would be sent to farm families. Families would go to the train station and pick out the child or children that they wanted to take home. These children were often used as just labor on the farm. Some were accepted as full members of the family. Some of them uh, may have helped to take care of younger children or to help with the laundry or whatever was needed. About 250,000 poor or abandoned children were relocated from the East Coast to the Midwest between the 1850s and the 1920s. We tend to think of orphans huddled on the street corners and being rescued and placed in an orphanage. However, not all of these children were really orphans. The orphanages, children's homes, asylums, institutions, industrial training schools, there were lots of names for the places these children were kept, were filled with children that came from many different backgrounds. When you're looking for an orphan, are you looking for a child from an orphanage or a child that was actually orphaned. Who were the children in orphanages? Some studies suggest that no more than 10 or 20% of the children in orphanages were actually orphans. Most had one or even two living parents. Most of the time, it was a case of the, the parents were not able to provide for the children. Typically, this was due to poverty or illness, or sometimes they were unwilling or unfit to provide care for the children. The institutions chose to admit children, sometimes when the parents were ill um, or had had financial situations that had made it difficult for them. This was to provide for the children, but also to serve kind of a moral purpose to re reform these children to make them better prepared for society. They were taught skills of self-reliance, whether they were in an orphanage or whether they were bound out to other families or indentured. For an example, the Protestant Orphan Asylum, which is an orphanage in St. Louis, Missouri, served disadvantaged children that lacked parents that were able to provide adequate care for them. 27% of these children were full orphans. 69% had at least one parent. That was divided between mothers and fathers equally. It could be either parent that was still alive. 4% of the children had both parents alive. Most of the children only stayed in the institution less than a year most of them were returned to family or friends. 32% of them were placed out as indentured servants, regardless of whether their parents approved of that choice or not. If they objected to the placement, um, they could still be indentured out. Society felt that the less fortunate lacked the capacity to care for their children. So understanding that children in orphanages were not always orphans is an important aspect when we start looking at the records of the children that were, served, were spending time in the orphanages. Before 1833, there were only 33 orphanages in the United States. In 1850, there were about 30,000 homeless children in New York City alone. There were 200 orphanages by 1860, and you'll see the number triples during the next few years. Part of this had to do with the Civil War. 
By 1933, there were 1,321 orphanages. If you realize this is the time when the Great Depression is starting to have a, a drastic effect on the poverty within the country. By the late 1930s, there were 1,600 orphanages and 144,000 children that were in care. So disease and war, all of these things contributed to the amount of children that were being placed. But orphanages did serve a good purpose. They provided the children with food and shelter and clothing when their parents were deceased or absent or unable to provide for them. Sometimes it was an alternate to living with neglect or abuse. When you begin your search into the life of an orphan, it's important to determine what you already know and what you want to find out. Where can you go with the information that you have? If you don't have much information, is there a relative who could help you get some more information? Do you know where the orphan was? What state, what city? What can you know about the location? Did they have other siblings? Have you found them in census records in the past? Were they connected to a church? If you know they were in an orphanage, do you know if it kept only boys or girls or both? Or even what age children would be accepted into the home? These would be important clues to help you. We want to gather as much information as we can with the information that we know. If you know who their parents were or anything about their family, do you know why they were separated from their family? We're trying to learn more about them as a person, as a family unit, their past, why they were put in an orphanage. So if we start by creating a timeline and just fill in the blanks of what you know, it helps us to be able to develop a stronger case for finding more information. So if you've determined a child was placed in an orphanage, do you know where that orphanage was? If so, do you know where the records are? Are they accessible to the public? Some orphanage records are actually closed to the public, sometimes permanently, sometimes for a certain number of years. Although sometimes you can go to court order to see them. Other states have very open records and anybody has access to them. So what are we hoping to find in an orphan record, orphanage record? Ideally, the child's name and birth date, basically how old they are, um, the status, you know, were they orphaned or were they abandoned? Can you find out when they were admitted or discharged from the orphanage? What can you find out about their parents, their last residence, other family members that might be in the area? Were they indentured or placed out? To whom? Where? Additional remarks. What else can you find? Well, we don't always get what we want. This is an example of an orphanage record. And this record only gives on the ledger the child's name, who adopted them, the county that they came from, and the county that they went into, and where their mother's home was. There was a man that I was helping find or try to find his siblings that were placed in an orphanage. And we found one of his siblings listed on this record, but that's all the information we were able to find. Other orphanages or institutions may have in a, a much uh, more useful register as far as finding information. This is one from a home in Ohio. If you notice, the top four children were all with a surname of Kemp. Further down, you have a couple of children that are Jones or Tucker. We're presuming these are sibling groups. You can tell their when they were born and where they were born, and you can see who their parents' names are. It almost appears that perhaps the, the Jones and the Tucker children, no, it looks like the Tucker one is separate. They've just skipped a line there. Anyway, you can find some more information about them, when they were born, where they were born, their parents' names, their nationality, how they were received, township, when admitted, who brought them, whether they were indentured, and to whom. 
This is the other side of this ledger. So it was a, a two page. So I noticed on here that the first three Kemp children went home with somebody whose last name was Bert, but it didn't seem to be the same people, but that they were indentured to. The fourth Kemp child went home with somebody whose last name was Kemp. Some of the other children on here were returned to their parents or to their mother. You do notice in the last column, it tells you when they were indentured or when they were placed someplace where they were going to be trained to work. This might be young girls in a hotel to change beds and to clean or it could be young men that were learning a trade. Now to gather more information, we would want to check if they were indentured to somebody to see what we could find out about those particular people. We would check the county records and look for a record of indenture or adoption or guardianship and try to correlate that with the time period here. In one of our later presentations, we'll discuss a little more about how to find that. So the more information you can find, the more you'll be able to get clues to be able to move forward. So to locate your court records, you're gonna to go to the county where the child was orphaned. Also check the county of where they were indentured or where the residence of the person that they were indentured to lives. Let's look at some places to find more information. You know, Google is a wonderful resource, but sometimes we can go even deeper with our search if we know where to look. Chronicling America is free to use. This is a newspaper site. It's sponsored by the National Endowment for the Humanities and the Library of Congress. It contains a database of digital copies of newspapers from 1789 to 1963, and it has a directory of American newspapers that were published any time between 1690 and the present. So sometimes it's a newspaper article that starts us on a search looking for an orphan. Other times we learn more about the family story based upon information found in a newspaper. When reading a newspaper article, keep your eyes open for clues. This particular article about Charles Hudson tells us that he's orphaned at the age of five and that his uncle Harvey Sansbury will probably take care of him. We know his mother, according to the article, is named Mrs. Charles Hudson and that she has died. This makes me wonder if maybe her surname was Sansbury before if an uncle with that name is coming to take care of him. So I would search in previous year's censuses to look for Harvey and to see if we could determine if he had family members that would, could possibly be siblings. So perhaps the clue of Sansbury would help us. We might want to um, check a little bit. We know that what Charles's father's name is. He's obviously named after, Charlie is named after his father. So we could look in um, 1918, this is an article from Washington, D.C. There are police um, censuses taken during 1915 and 1919. And so we'd be able to do some checking to see if we could find his family listed there. This article also gives the parents address. They lived at 1211 Four and a Half Street Southwest. We could check a city directory to see if we could track the family a little bit there and learn more about them. Years ago, I was searching in Chronicling America, hoping to find some tidbits of information about my third great grandparents. My first surprise was that I found an article that mentioned both of them. The second was what it said. The Bay City Papers tell of a piece of the meanest kind of meanness recently perpetuated, 
perpetrated in that city by one John Romer, who had been entrusted with the care of the wife and three children of Gustav Peters, a vaudeville performer, whose business called him to Cincinnati, no, to Chicago. It's charged that the woman and children were abandoned to the care of the authorities and that he took for his own use $590 that Peter had sent them and that he allowed Peter's to, land to be sold for taxes and bid it for himself. So it was a little bit scandalous, but it was an interesting thing. I immediately checked to see if I could find where this county um, building is where the children were abandoned to and the wife. In other words, they've gone to the poor house or something of that type. So let's take some look. I searched in a few more days after that to see if I could find more articles than I could, quite a lot of detail. And it says that a discovery was made today which illustrates the beauty of our laws and reflects still more seriously on the character of John A. Romer. Unless his case is better than it appears, and he did not, as he claims, receive the amount of money Peters declares he sent him. Remember, Peters is traveling around as a vaudeville performer. And I can tell you there's many newspaper stories I find about him once I knew his occupation. And... Uh, Let's just say that they're a little bit um, detailed and have quite a bit of story to them, a little bit of a, maybe we'd find them in the National Enquirer. Anyway, so reading further, it says, the boy Willie Peters was bound to Fred Barclay. This was a mistake. The boy had been sent by Romer to the county house and from thence was taken about the 4th of April. So I know he's gone to the county house. I know it's about the 4th of April, and now he's bound out to John A. Romer. So it continues with this, and it talks about the court commissioner. So I know that we need to check court records also. I did check court records and found quite a bit of information. So our goal is to try to contact the home that they've been sent to or the county building, if we know if it's a state run orphanage, if we if they you can't find the records directly through the orphanage or whatever it has become now through the Department of Social and Welfare Services. You can also check with a town or a city or county clerk, check local churches and church archives contact historical societies or genealogical societies. And an interesting thought is, if you can't find the records in any of these places, sometimes you can figure out who started the benevolent institution and contact their family or descendants to see if you can find out more about where the records may be. So in trying to find records for little Willie, who also had two sisters, Josephine and Millie, I looked in the Michigan archives and I did find that the register of children from 1874 to 1938 exists in the archives there. However, the law says that I don't have access to them. These are permanently sealed. Now the records would tell me all the information I would like to know. But don't give up there. There's still plenty of ways that you can find more information. So what we want to know is more about the homes that the children were in and to dig a little bit deeper to figure out where records are. My records were placed in a state archive, but there are other places. Doing some searching, you can often find photos of the home or the children or maybe newspaper articles that talk about the events that happened in the home. Exciting things are when you find pictures that show lots of children there and perhaps your ancestor is there. One lady asked me for help in locating her grandfather's records. She didn't know what his name was before he was adopted. She knew he was orphaned. I located the home by contacting local churches in the area to figure out where the records might be. 
they checked their files and they said, have her give me a call because we can tell her right now what date he was brought to the orphanage and who his parents were. So doing some research, we can get lucky. We can find the information that we need. We might be lucky and find beautiful photos like this. Sometimes you can find out about current events that they're having if the home is still functioning as some type of building associated with children. Sometimes there will be reunions for people that have lived there in the past. And that can be an exciting way to learn more information. We'll talk in another session about how to find census records, but here would be an example of a transcription of a census record. This is for St. Joseph's Home for Boys in Jackson, Michigan. It's a good example. Finding this is nice. It's easy to read as a transcription. It's always a good idea to go try to find the original census reports. Now, this particular home, a famous resident there was Tom Mahanahan, the founder of Domino's Pizza. Another place to look is at orphanfinder.com. This is a new site that's an online directory of children's homes. It lists where to find records, photos, historical accounts, and oral histories, and so much more. So in the next two parts, we'll dig deeper into how to find information about orphans and orphanages using different record sources.